Hello everybody, this is Starman, and welcome back to Let's Play Gabriel Knight, the 20th Anniversary Edition. Well, we are here at uh, the Precinct House for the Police in the French Quarter of New Orleans. Quite a bit to look at here, but none of it's really important except for establishing flavor. Those motorcycles belong to the Precinct. They're not as cool as Gabriel's bike. And clicking on our bike just automatically takes us to the exit screen, so we cannot look at our cool bike and appreciate how much cooler it is than the police bikes. The police station is in a classic French Quarter building. And we cannot click on the parking meters. That is Mosley's office. We can also duck into this alleyway, even though ducking into alleyways in a big city is usually not a good idea. Graffiti. <laughs> I should add Mosley to the hat. That window leads to Mosley's office. If Gabriel wants to talk to Mosley, he can go in through the front door. Now, of course, we will need to get into his office at some point later in the game. And uh, this is one of the changes in the new edition, is that originally, when you went to the police station, you just automatically walked in the front door. There was no exterior. Which meant that uh, you did have to go through a rather twisted logic chain in order to get into the office. So, having to go in through the window makes for one slightly more coherent puzzle later on, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Let us go in to the police station, where uh, you might remember we were told last time we had photos waiting for us at the front desk. So let's go ahead and uh, talk to the desk sergeant here. The desk sergeant looks like a poster boy for heart disease. 30 extra pounds between his armpits and his belt, and a complexion the consistency of gray oatmeal. In other words, a typical product of good southern cooking. Got a second, officer? What can I do you for? And what the heck, we will ask him about everything. What do you know about voodoo? Me? Nothing. I'm a Catholic boy. What can you tell me about the voodoo murders? I'm not allowed to give out information on police cases. This will not tell us much, of course. What can you tell me about the voodoo murders? Hey, buddy, do I look like the kind of lowlife that'd betray my sacred oath to this department? I don't know. What would that kind of lowlife look like? Like hamburger meat if I got a hold of them. Kind of like what you're gonna look like in about five seconds. Okay, okay. Sorry I asked. What can you tell me about Norlins? I'll tell you. I'm glad as hell it's not Mardi Gras. If it weren't for that one month a year, being a cop in New Orleans would be a real pleasure. As it is, I'd rather stick behind this desk. I do like how all the natives are saying New Orleans instead of New Orleans. What can you tell me about New Orleans? Best food in the world. You can get it right here in New Orleans. Mufaletta sandwiches. Mmm, mmm. Beignets, good Cajun coffee. Yep, a man can die happy in this city. It's practically guaranteed. I was supposed to pick up some photos from Detective Mosley at the front desk. Is that right? And who are you? My name is Knight. Gabriel Knight. Yeah, I got something for you, all right. Soon as you're done talking, I'll give it to you. Oh my. I'm here to see Detective Mosley. He's out at a crime scene. Sorry. Where's the crime scene? Is it related to the voodoo murders? Crime scene information is police confidential. We don't need any more looky-loos than are probably already there. 
Come on, you can tell me where the crime scene is. Look, I know the papers got everybody stirred up about these killings, but that don't make it public information. Back off. So this is a new voodoo murder then? Hey, I didn't say that. You'll read all about it in the papers tomorrow. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm here to see Detective Mosley. I told you, he's not here. Tell me about yourself. Who, me? I'm the desk sergeant, Frick. Why? Frick? That's right. You got a problem with that? Not at all. Where's Sergeant Frack? Tell me about yourself. You see that front door? Yeah. Well, I watch people come in. See this book? Yeah. Well, I write people's names in it, see? People that bother me. Want me to put your name in this book? Oh, I think not. That's what I thought. Hey, nice precinct. Think so, huh? <laughs> That's peachy. That means more to me than you could know. Kind of quiet in here today. Summer's like that. Too muggy to mug, too hot to heft. How clever. It's a gift. So, what's new around the old police station? Well, we're now allowed to shoot chatty pedestrians on sight. That sounds convenient. I like it. Excuse me, Officer Frick? Whatever it is, no. Now get out of here before I have you arrested for disturbing the peace. I don't think I'm going to push him on that any further. Here's an envelope for you, Gabriel Knight. Thanks. All right, so we now have an envelope. The envelope for Mosley is a plain Manila one. It feels pretty light. Gabriel opens the envelope and finds two photographs. One of the photos for Mosley is an official Voodoo Murders crime scene shot, a graphic close-up of a victim. The photograph of Mosley was apparently taken on his graduation from the police academy. He had hair then. Okay, that. One of the photos from Mosley is an official Voodoo Murders crime scene shot, a graphic close-up of a victim. Yeah, that's uh, pretty graphic. The label on the hair gel talks about mysterious Hawaiian roots and ancient Oriental secrets. The copy is about as believable as, or almost as believable as Gabriel's novels. And we can't get any more description from doing that on anything else. So, we know Mosley is at a crime scene, but we don't know where it is, and we know that the cops here are not going to tell us where it is. So, how are we going to find out, out of all of the many locations we have, where to go next? Well, again, as I noted in the last chapter, one of the things they do with the remake is limit where you can go on certain days so that you don't have the whole situation frequent in the original game where you would wind up having all these locations and no actual clue where to go next. So, by process of elimination, the only one that we have... Well, we have a couple places, but where we really need to go is Jackson Square. Because everything else is linked to it. So we go here and you'll note, there is a police officer. A police officer is either off duty or patrolling the park, or both. Good day, officer. Yeah, you too. Keep moving. Now he has a radio. There's a police band radio on that bike. 
Now, of course. You face geek. You want to eat my fist? Mind if I use your radio? What are you nuts? Forget it. Touchy. Well, it was worth a try. Anyone seen Joe? So yes, we need to get that cop away from the radio, just long enough to see if we can figure out a way of the crime scene. And in order to do that, we're going to have to make use of one of the world's greatest enemies, a mime. The trick is that we have to keep moving quickly enough to where he does not get distracted by somebody else and start imitating them instead. You white-faced geek! You wanna eat my fist? So we need to get the mime to follow us to the cop, at which point he will start impersonating the cop and enrage the cop into chasing after him. This may take a few tries. If it takes too many, I will cut away so you don't have to watch it. You white face geek, you want to eat my fist? Okay, hopefully if we move quick now that that guy is out of the way. <sighs> Except that girl is going to move in just as quick, so we're going to try and move out of this way. No, no, she's going to move right toward us. Cut her off the pass. <sighs> well, I never... Leave me alone, you, you, you man! Okay, hurry, hurry, hurry. It I did not mean to do that. Knock it off, you, before I shove this washboard down your throat. Is that red green? Sounds like him. Well, if the ladies can't find you handsome, at least they can find you handy. Okay, I think we might just pull it off this time. Cut that out. I told you to stop that. All right, mister, you want some of this? Why, you little... And with that done... Face geek, you want to eat my fist?
Hey, you, get away from that bike. Sorry. All right. So now we know where to go. So we can now exit on oh, a subtle flashing blue of the uh, exit to Greater New Orleans map there. And exit back to the French Quarter. Hey, mostly. Huh? Knight, you wiener. I told you not to call me that. Feeling jumpy? Who, me? Don't be stupid. How'd you find me? Oh, I was just driving by. Uh-huh. Well, I guess I can let you see it. For the book. But don't tell anyone, huh? Definitely another voodoo murder. Same M.O. and no freaking clues. We're still waiting on an I.D. for the body. Oh, that's disgusting. Isn't this a rather public area for this kind of thing? Yeah, they're freaking ghosts, these guys. Lakeshore Drive isn't exactly the 10 Expressway, but it is open to the public. No reports of nothing. Now, who the hell is that? <clears throat> Good day, Miss Getty. What's going on, officer? Detective Mosley, ma'am. Uh, we got a little problem here, but nothing for you to be concerned about. I see. Thank you, Detective. And good day, gentlemen. Love the artwork on the Cinemax scenes here. Forget it. That's Molly Getty. She's about as far out of your reach as the moon. Probably on her way to meet some guy with a yacht right now. Near here? The lake's a popular place for country clubs. If she's out here a lot, maybe she saw something or heard something. Nah, nobody ever sees or hears nothing. I told you. Besides, you just don't go around bothering people like her. We've about wrapped it up, sir. Well, let's get the meat wagon moving then. Stick around and take notes for the book if you want. Watch out for the muck and the water moccasins, though. If you want to talk, I'll be at the station tomorrow. Thanks. And there's another subtle way that they space the uh, puzzles and the pacing of the game out a little bit because you can just leave, or the original game you could just leave from here and go talk to Mosley at the station then. But uh, we're going to do a little bit of crime scene investigation first. Now, we can't really do anything with the blood. Oof, that's a lot of blood. No, oh, I've got no way to take that with me, and I don't want to. There's a pattern to the lines in the sand, but only one small area is clearly defined. Well... Hmm, let me try to copy this down. The partial pattern from the crime scene intrigues Gabriel. What does it mean? Well, then we got some tracks Looks like over there here. There was something here. I should take a closer look. Which is their subtle way of indicating you need a magnifying glass. Looks like a scale of some sort. Well, there's no way to pick that up with our bare hands, but... Gabriel carefully uses the tweezers to take the small, iridescent scale. 
And I think it's a snake scale. But it beats the hell out of me what kind. Okay, so we have a snake scale. We have a sketch of the pattern. Is that everything that we need from here? Not quite, because... For reasons that will make sense later... We need to take some clay. The banks of Lake uh, Pondich... Yeah. French names give me fits, but yeah, clay deposits. So let me just scoop some of this clay up in my bare hands and put it in the pockets of my of expensive clay. leather trench coat. Why not? Lakeshore Rot Drive runs around the entire lake. This is a particularly lonely stretch, but it's still a public road. But that is all we need from here. Hey, Grace, here I am. Oh boy, party time. Got a minute, Grace? What's up? And you'll note that now we have a request research option, but we're going to go ahead and ask about snakes first. Do you know anything about snakes? Doing a family tree, Gabriel? Very funny. I mean, real snakes, you know, scaly, cold-blooded. I would have thought you'd find them empathetic. Mm-hmm. I know very little about reptiles of any kind, and prefer to keep it that way. I think there's a book on snakes around here somewhere, though. Okay, thanks. Do you have messages for me? Nope, none right now. Could you do some research for me? Sure, what? Could you see what you can find out about a woman named Malia Getty? Hmm, the name Getty sounds familiar. What's your interest in her? Oh, just, you know, stuff about the voodoo murders. If you can get an address... Mm-hmm. The murders, right. I'll see what I can find out. Well... Oh, it's about closing time. So it is. Good night, Gracie. Good night, Gabriel. And try not to dream, okay? Yep, there we are, the end of day one, and we're about to see Gabriel's reoccurring nightmare once again which uh, I did not go into detail describing last time. And I won't this time either, because uh, we'll have plenty of chance to discuss it later, but uh, just so you know what this is that's coming up, that is all David Lynch meets Stanley Kubrick with a little bit of John Waters thrown in. Brings us to the start of day two. A mask I wore as I approached, I was what I am not, and though the pattern was unclear, its meaning could be bought. Don't you look swell today? Actually, swollen. Mm. So have some. There's a fresh pot on the table. 
Seriously, you look like hell. Your hair is sticking straight up like a... Oh, it always does that. Never mind. Ha ha. Did you dream about the fire and the hanged guy and that lion thing last night? Leopard, not lion. Did you get anything on Amalia Getty? Well, I did get her address, but you're a little out of your league here, big fella. The Gettys own three local hospitals, just to name a few of their assets. They run in very high circles. Did you get an address? I got the address. I suppose this has nothing to do with the fact that Molly Getty is incredibly gorgeous. I should have known you wouldn't go for a rich, ugly socialite. And that address is? Hey, far be it from me to postpone your total humiliation. It's 557 West Ingram. That's the Garden District. Estate City. That's all I wanted to know. And yes, my dear, Malia Getty is the most dangerous looking diversion I have ever seen. Ouch. Ugh, men. All right, well, let's do our morning routine real quick and check the newspaper. Times dated June 19th, 1993. A front page article describes the most recent of the voodoo murders. Gabriel scans it but learns nothing new. The article reiterates that the voodoo aspect of the crimes is faked. Gabriel shivers. It looked real enough to him. Elsewhere, there's an article about the history of Jackson Square. Called La Plaza de Armas under French rule, it was used for executions, firing squads, hangings, even impalement and breaking on the wheel. Yikes. Of course, these days it's mostly hanging out for tourists, street musicians, and local artists. Gabriel also scans the Aquarius horoscope for the day. Chances of a dark star rising on this day. Do not trust your instincts. I feel a dark star rising all right. Wow. All right, well, with that done, we will go ahead and close out this chapter. And next time, we will start at the police station and start asking Mosley for more details on the voodoo murders. We'll see you next time.